John with Chest Freezer Cold Plunge. And this is part three of a three-part series on how to keep your water clean in your cold plunge. The first part was an overview of keeping your water clean. The second video was on pumps and filters. And this video is going to be on sanitation. Because there's a lot of information to cover, I'm going to separate this video into two parts. Chemicals and technology. The first part is going to be about chemicals that you can use to keep your water clean. And then the second part will be on the different devices that you can use to keep your water clean. Which one is going to work best for you really gets down ultimately to your preference. So I'm going to only cover the big, most common ones that people are using. There are other methods. I do go over those into more detail in my book. If you want to dig into that, please buy my book. It's on my website. First of all, if you're using chlorine, you can get chlorine at any pool store. Hardware stores even have it. You want to use the little tablets and you want to get a small floating chlorine dispenser uh, like the ones that are used in small hot tubs. And you put one tablet in there, you put that thing into your cold plunge, and then you've got the pump and filter already working that we talked about in the previous video. And that'll keep your water clean. All you need to do is uh, measure the chlorine level parts per million and uh, keep that parts per million in the recommended range of the test strips that you have. So uh, that's usually somewhere between one to three parts per million. If you're sensitive to chlorine or bromine or you don't like to smell or if it irritates your skin, another option would be to use hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide is a very powerful oxidizer and it can be used, even people who own hot tubs are using it instead of chlorine or bromine because they don't like the, uh, the, the effects or the results of that, those harsher chemicals. So hydrogen peroxide comes in different concentrations. At your grocery store or at the local pharmacy, you can find that little brown bottle. It comes, it's typically 3% grade and that's okay. Um, you'll need a lot of it. And I've got a, uh, on, in my Facebook group, you go down to my Facebook group, uh, join the group there. It's free to join. If you go into the file section there, you will find a spreadsheet that will tell you based on the number of gallons or the volume of water, gallons or liters that you have in your chest freezer, how much hydrogen peroxide you need based on what percentage it is that you find. So the common percentages or concentrations of hydrogen peroxide are 3% at the grocery store. You can special order 12%. That's the maximum allowed in some countries. And then 35% food grade is the highest concentration of hydrogen peroxide that's legal to be sold to just average consumers. But you do need to get it from a special order website typically. A side note that I find interesting is that hydrogen peroxide in 80 to 90% concentration is used for you know what it's used for? Rocket fuel. Disclaimer, building a rocket out of a chest freezer is beyond the scope of this video. So uh, just find the right hydrogen peroxide concentration that you can get a hold of in your wherever it is that you live and then use the spreadsheet. You will need test strips to ensure that the hydrogen peroxide levels are maintained. Typically, you want to keep it somewhere between 30 to 100 parts per million in order for it to kill anything in the water that could be harmful to you. And that's just for general maintenance. Uh, again, that spreadsheet uh, in the Facebook group also has a the general maintenance levels that you need, like the volume, how much to add, but it will also tell you how much you need to shock the water. And that's that initial, you know, kill anything that's in there uh, right away uh, and make sure they're not thriving. Epsom salts are the other thing uh, that you could use to sanitize the water. However, there are a number of problems with Epsom salts. The big issue with Epsom salts is that, uh, number one, even if you order the food grade salts, they very likely have impurities in them. I have discovered that the hard way uh, from running, uh, putting the salts in there and uh, left a brown, brownish goo all the way around the sides, a residue above the water level. And if that was really a pure Epsom salt, that shouldn't have happened. The second thing is that the amount of Epsom salts you actually need or other salts that you would need to kill microbes is actually really high. It's about 10%. The other thing you need to do in terms of the maintenance and keeping your water clean is that whatever sanitizer you're going to use, it's not going to clean the walls. You might notice that your chest freezer starts to get slippery or feel slimy and that's an algae that's building up on the wall. It might be clear or it might be green, it might be red, but uh, typically it's going to be clear and what you want to do to uh, help that out is just to wipe down those walls and floor. You can use that as part of just, you know, weekly maintenance um, or just when you're in the chest freezer, you can do that um, and uh, just wipe down the walls and that'll help keep that algae from building up on there and keep the chest freezer from getting slimy. 
And then and maybe you can do that once every two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. For some people, it could take months before they, it starts to get slippery or slimy. There are so many details and so many variables that go into it, like any other chemical. Uh, so you've got to find what works best for you. Next thing I want to mention uh, just quickly is essential oils. There are essential oils with antimicrobial properties. Uh, they can be helpful for that, for cleaning around the house. However, you really don't want to put them in your chest freezer because they can really gunk up your pump and filter. And it would really require probably a much higher concentration of essential oils than what you're just using on your counter to clean with. If you do use essential oils as part of like, if you make your own uh, cleaners. So um, I really don't recommend those for the cold plunge. This concludes the video on using chemicals to keep your water clean. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Check out the description, the information below the video. You'll find links to my Facebook group, my website, and other information that will be helpful to you. If you like these videos, please like, click that like button. Please subscribe. That helps me support our global cold plunge community and my family. Your patronage, your participation is greatly appreciated. Be sure to tune in to part two on sanitation. We will be talking about technology that you can use to keep your water clean. And this is actually my favorite part. So check out that next video coming up.